Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I'm very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Hello and welcome back to Big Mouth. And you can keep this or any other conversation I ignite going over on my Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And I think my Instagram is Big Mouth 967, but I could be wrong because it's only new. Welcome to Thursday's edition of the DCEU Daily, an edition I wrote a special script for because today's a massive day for the release, the Snyder Cut um, movement, Zack Snyder's Justice League. It was, It is a very important day. It's the 14th of the 2nd. It's 2.14, 214 minutes. That is the reported length, according to Zack Snyder, of his um, version of the Justice League movie. But then Matt Reeves and Warner Brothers decided to change the narrative. And they posted a video reveal, a video reveal of, um, of Robert Pattinson's a Batman costume from the Batman with Michael Giacchino's music over it. Now, obviously, I don't have editing software, so it's not going to be professional, but I've got it on my telly, and let's enjoy this. I've seen this half a dozen times, but this, my friends, is off the scale. Wow, wow, wow. So, of course, it's a bit dark, it's a bit gritty, but you get what you're seeing. It is amazing, right? And we're going to talk about this, what this means in a week where Warner Brothers has been, been accused of being bad at marketing. I, irony is great for me. It's brilliant how these people's false narratives are shot down. But on my Instagram, and we'll go to my Instagram right now because I did post pictures for the people who decided to follow me. Big Mouth 987, by the way. Not nine six seven. So here we have it. Where are we? So so right. This is it. This is this is the pictures cleared up a bit. So there's Robert Pattinson in the costume. He looks freaking amazing, right? Amazing. You agree, right? Here's a close up. Someone's black and whited it and made it clearer. That's what the Batman insignia looks like. Close up. Really liking it, really liking the Arkham Games kind of um, feel and vibe to it as well. And there's another close up there, just in case you didn't get the other one. This is brilliant. I'm so sorry I don't have editing software. I wouldn't know where to start. And here's a close look. Look at him. Look at that chin. It looks amazing. He was born to play the Batman. Now, here's the original kind of reddish, because even in that video, you can see it's very red. But it's an awesome effect. There he is again in the red, in the original, the way Matt Reeves wanted it to look in this promo. And there is the bat insignia. Wow, 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 wow. I am blown away by this. Don't tell me that Warner Brothers don't know how to market their movies. Please, this is a week that Wonder Woman 1984 was spread in the front cover of Entertainment Weekly. Don't tell me that Warner Brothers don't know how to market. They marketed Birds of Prey the way they wanted to market it. It was good marketing. It was all over the place. No, we didn't have five or six trailers. You don't need to. But at the end of the day, it was marketed properly. The box office is really good really solid. It's a little R-rated movie. It was never going to make anything that it's made. This time next week, it will be on about 200 million globally. Let's double its budget. So get over it. 
and Warner Brothers do know how to market, and it's amazing. But of course, of course, a lot of people are really upset because a lot of people from the release of Snyder Cut, the Zack Snyder community, blame Matt Reeves for removing Ben Affleck as the Batman. That, look, um, I don't know what happened. I know that um, Ben Affleck at the time when he did leave the picture was suffering with alcoholism and depression and he had marital problems as well. Now, we know that Ben Affleck originally stepped down from directing the picture and he was actually still going to be in it. And it looks like it was a slow process. I think that was the time when Walter Hamada was there. Listen, um, do I think that Ben Affleck on his own decided to step down from this project? No. We do remember that Matt Reeves walked away from negotiations from Warner Brothers because he wasn't happy about something, but then he came back. I'm assuming initially Matt didn't want Ben Affleck to play the Batman. It wasn't him. It wasn't what he wanted. He wanted to come in with something totally different and totally new, and they allowed him to cast a new person. Now, if you want to go and attack the man for that, that's up to you. But for me, Matt Reeves is a funny, talented director, and I'm really, really excited for this take. Isn't it amazing what Warner Brothers can do when they focus their minds on it? The marketing for these films, of course, is no accident. This kind of makes everyone forget the negativity for Birds of Prey, but the negativity for Birds of Prey is a false narrative anyway. This is just Warner Brothers biting back. Do you remember when the Seagull and Schuster heirs tried to take Superman away, the rights, and everyone thought Warner Brothers was going to lose, and they didn't? You can't mess around with a big company at the end of the day. So I'm so excited. It looks amazing. The Batman looks amazing. We kind of know what kind of films it's going to be, but we even we have even more clues now. So for me, it's absolutely fantastic, and I'm really excited for this film. And if this is just the curtain raiser, what have we got to look forward to? But I've got more pictures for you. Now, this is not actually an on-set pic, but this is the kind of thing that's going on under Hamada's DCEU. Here's the brilliant James Gunn with some people in South America um, after filming on his Suicide Squad. And it's brilliant. He really looks like he's having a good time. Here he is again. Brilliant. Doing, um, you know, um, group selfies with some fans. Absolutely fantastic. And here's James again. Now, this is interesting because he's wearing... Is it a Batman? Is it a Batman top? It looks... It might not be a Batman top, actually. I could be wrong. Because I was going to start saying, what if Batman is actually in the Suicide Squad in the year that we actually see the Batman. That's right. The Batman and the Suicide Squad are both released next year. This is this is Hamada's real, real vision of the DCEU. And as I was explaining yesterday, if we, we can get excited about what they're doing with the DCEU, and we should, but let we have a, you know, yesterday we were talking about what Todd Phillips is planning for his Black Label movies and the potential in that. So we've got the DCEU, and we've got the black label as well. This is this is a roadmap and a blueprint that really, really excites me. And if you're a DC fan, you need to be excited as well. Without agenda and a, without narrative. Right, so that's exciting. Now, I'm going to talk about what I thought I was going to talk about all along. And that, my friends, is 214. It's a massive day today for the release of the Snyder Cut movement, the Snyder community, and everyone who supports that man. And as well as being a DC fan and excited for what's to come in the future, I, of course, I'm a big Zack Snyder fan, I'm a big Man of Steel fan, and I'm a big um, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. So today is the day where I think they actually announced, RT Snyder Cut will announce the winner of the um, release the Snyder Cut Release the Snyder Cut Justice League um, um, art competition. Now, RT Snyder Cut have uh, caused some controversy here because they said, unless you're talking about the artwork, you shouldn't hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Now, many, many people, including Chris Wong Spencer, a very prominent figure in this movement, has said that maybe they should, should have created another hashtag for the artwork. And I agree. It seems like a day like today, 214. 
That's a big deal. The fans have made that a big deal. Zack Snyder himself made that a big deal by announcing that his Justice League is 214 minutes long. To say on a special day like this, which means a lot, and I mean, I know people have got high hopes of actually having an announcement about release for Snyder Cut. Don't get your hopes up that high, but it's definitely an auspicious day where we all should be able to hashtag gifts from BVS and MOS and to tell us, and to tell us we can't do that seems a bit weird. Now I know they want to create a, a big thing with the hashtag so it, it gets more coverage and more airwaves and obviously it will trend. And maybe, no, not maybe, that, that's why they're doing it. And I get that. But it just seems odd to me to say to people, you can own, you should only hashtag release the Snyder Cup for the artwork. Anyway, I think that's odd. And I just think that people are going to really hashtag release the Snyder Cup because it's such an auspicious, massive day. And it really is. Now, as we know, Zach really hasn't posted lately since the announcement of this art competition. I think today's the day they announced the winner anyway. Now, and today's going to be an interesting day because obviously we've had the big the Batman costume reveal. That's massive. Now, a lot of Snyder fans are saying they've done this on purpose to kind of dampen the enthusiasm from the release of the Snyder Cup community. Look, it's in look, it's interesting. But don't forget, this was yesterday in America, wasn't it? Yeah, this was the 13th in America. So if they wanted to, so basically, when you Americans wake up, it's 2.14, right? So by the time I upload this, you'll be going, oh, it's morning. It's 2.14. It's exciting. So actually, they've actually done it a day before. But So I don't really agree with that. And I don't think that they're, they're worried about that. I think the whole idea of this week was to wash away the negativity of Birds of Prey. But as I say, the negativity isn't from Warner Brothers. It isn't from Margot Robbie. It's a good film. Now, there's another narrative being set here as well. Which is very, very sad because you've got you've got people saying uh, the only bad um, reviews uh, were from men. Well, to be honest, why are we talking about bad reviews for Birds of Prey? The, the high percentage of people talking about that film and reviewing that film, fans and professional critics, were very positive. You know, we're talking at the stakes of 70, 80 percent. So to talk about negative reviews, again, we're trying to politically weaponize entertainment. And I'm sick to death of it. And now there's another narrative. There's a high percentage that the Sonic the Hedgehog movie will be number one at the box office, right? We'll make loads of money. We'll make more money than Birds of Prey. The fandom menace are already trying to weaponize this film against Birds of Prey to prove what a flop Birds of Prey is. As I keep on saying, and I may print bumper stickers if I can be bothered, Birds of Prey isn't a flop. Now, getting back to this auspicious day, Will Zack Snyder re release something? Is this the day we hear the announcement that we're getting the Snyder Cut? No. But I do think today could be the day he announces the release of the Snyder Cut, the, 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 the Snyder Cut version of Justice League graphic novel. And I think that's what the artwork's all been about. So that's quite exciting. It's not the movie. I've always said it wasn't. I don't want this instead of the movie. But... Hey, if we're going to get a graphic novel of that whole movie right, and we're going to get pages and stuff, that's exciting. Because we may not be able to see the movie right now, but we actually get to see what's in the movie. Because the thing is with me, I don't want Zach to mess around with his cut of the movie. I want to see why Warner Brothers um, pushed him out. I want to know what scared Warner Brothers so much that they brought in Joss Whedon, were happy to release a film with the awful upper lip, Henry Cavill CGI, why they were happy to release that, but they weren't, they weren't happy to release a cohesive, you know, really long movie about Justice League, you know, that's, that for me is, that's the strange thing, you see, studios don't normally do this, not on that level, what happened with Justice League was, as well as immoral and terrible how Zack was treated, we have to ask the question, what scared them about Justice League that they wouldn't release Zack's version? What scared them when him and Chris Terrio wrote the first two drafts of the Justice League movie? What was in it? What was in it? What had Zack and Chris done that frightened Warner Brothers so much? That's what I want to know, because I want to know both sides of the argument. I'm a Zack Snyder fan, but I'm not blind and I'm not stupid. And I want to see Justice League how Zack Snyder meant it to be seen at the time. So I can say either, 
What was Warner Brothers' problem? There's nothing in this film that's an issue. Or for me to say, do you know what? Maybe it shouldn't have been that off the scale kind of thing. I don't know, because I've never seen the film. And I'm a really measured guy. So I actually want to see this film as Zach meant it. And I want to see the film in the way that Warner Brothers was shown it, so I know what scared the living shit out of it. Because from the outside looking in, it looks really bad. Zack Snyder has completed BVS. He shot the whole of Justice League. Then he quit. And we were told he quit because of his daughter's, you know, tragic suicide, which is very tragic. But at the end of the day, um, there's so much more to this story than meets the eye. You know, because it is interesting for me how Warner Brothers, the direction in the DCEU ever since Zack's left. Justice League may be a kind of Frankenstein's monster, but when you look at the, the post credit scenes and you look at Aquaman giving us post credit scenes, um, and even Shazam gave us post credit scenes, they're going in that direction with the DCEU. And then with the black label, they'll go a bit more darker and Zack Snyder-ish, if you like. So they're kind of going the way they wanted to go ever since they got rid of Zack. So that's interesting as well. But today is a very, very special day. For me, it's not an anniversary, but it's a kind of anniversary because it signifies um, what we've been through, what Zack's been through, the fight to get this cut of Justice League out. While this DCEU, these DC films continue to be made and they're going in the direction they wanted to go without Zack Snyder. What the Snyder Cut actually signifies is why. It's evidence. It's evidence um, why Zack was forced off the production. It's evidence to say, what's, as I say, what scared WB so much? I want to know that. But most importantly of all, I just want to see this film. And I think that's important. And I think, as I said yesterday, we keep on patting ourselves on the back. We have donated thousands and thousands of um, dollars, pounds or rupees or whatever, right? Um, to, you know, um, suicide prevention, which is very, very important, especially on a day like today, which is Valentine's Day, where a lot of people are happy and they're in their relationships. But there's also a lot of people who are, who are depressed, are anxious, um, attempted suicides, um, successful suicides. So Valentine's Day is a bit of a mixture. People don't think about Valentine's Day in those terms, but I know the full picture. Um, so a lot of us have got, you know, there's a lot to focus on. So don't focus on anything that makes you feel down. Focus on something that excites you, like the Snyder Cut, like this Batman reveal. The Batman reveal of the costume is awesome. But as I say, what I'm going to do today is hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Is release all the art, uh, re, sorry, retweet all the artwork, retweet other people, hashtagging, release the Snyder Cut with their gifts. It's an exciting day. This is a release the Snyder Cut day. Today is 2.14 and it's absolutely massive. Now, on tomorrow's DCEU Daily, I'm hoping to react to Zach posting some stuff on Vero and we will see. So I want you to have a wonderful day. I really do because this, my friends, is wonderful. 214, the reveal of the Batman, and there's no need for us to be angry at Matt Reeves for what he's doing or what DC, what they're doing with the future of these films. It's just about us enjoying the content and fighting for the Snyder Cut and the Air Cut to be released. Yes, I'm back. That surprised you, didn't it? So I want you to comment down below, like, share and subscribe, share the video and share the channel. And I'm going to leave you with that reveal of the Batman because it's glorious, especially Michael Giacchino's music. Aren't we lucky to have him? See you again tomorrow.
See you again tomorrow. More DCEU Daily. It's great to be a DC fan right now, isn't it? <laughs>